you, David, and good morning. Um, my thanks as well for the, in, for the opportunity to be here with you this morning to the Consul General Prado and his team. Um, Jean-Philippe, thank you for the invitation. Appreciate it and all you're doing here to raise the flag, raise the awareness of what's happening uh, up north. Uh, it's good to uh, be part of it. It's also an honor to follow uh, Dr. Isaacs. I've, in my 15 years of doing business development for companies coming into the market in uh, Western Canada, I've always uh, had a lot of respect for Mr. Isaac's work, and he truly is a, a unique gem for us in Alberta, knows that the depth of knowledge, in, in, as incredible as everything you just heard was, it goes much deeper than that. So if you have, if you have questions around specifics uh, with regards to how this is all done and how it's been done for years and how it's evolving and, and, uh, and developing from a technology point of view, environment and so on, he is a, a wealth of information. So. Look forward to lunch and uh, all the technology and environmental side of things, which would be great. So, so thank you. So my, um, my little portion here of this morning's talk is to do with uh, the supply chain and how do you actually take advantage of these opportunities. We often um, uh, go, we go around the world and we talk to companies about the oil sands. We talk about how big they are and how much is going on and how big the trucks are and all that fun stuff. And, um, but really, at the end of the day, when companies come to a, an event like this, they want to know, so what? what? What does that mean for my company? What does that mean for my product or my service or my technology or my innovation? Where does it fit? How does it, how would it actually be used in the oil sands? How do I actually figure out how, who to talk to and who to, who to deal with? And how does the supply chain work and et cetera, et cetera. So, so many of these questions um, are very, very specific to your own company. Um, how you enter the market, how you take advantage of the market will, uh, will be driven by what it is you sell, how big your company is, what the capacity is of your company. So I wanted to go through just a few slides this morning to guide a discussion around this. Um, and then certainly we'll go to Q&A and, and talk more. But um, let's talk a little bit about the supply chain, how it works, how it integrates. And of course, David's going to talk from Imperial's point of view, Imperial being being certainly one of, uh, one of our, our oldest and strongest companies uh, up in Canada. Um, and he'll, David will give us more about what they're doing specifically, and I believe the procurement component of, of that. So that'll be excellent for you to learn from too. So let me flip through a few slides here. Um, so getting ready f to supply the oil sands. Um, no small thing. It's a big, it's actually a very big industry with a lot of moving parts. Understanding exactly what your value proposition is to the market is really critical, so keep that in mind. Um, and market space, is there room for my particular product in the market? Uh, these are questions that, that you need to answer as you, as you consider the market. Where do we fit in the supply chain, which we'll talk a little bit about as we go forward here this morning. Um, who, are your, who are the right buyers? Uh, and and then it's not always obvious. I know a lot of companies we talk to want to meet Imperial Oil, they want to meet Suncor, they want to meet all the big boys. Uh, they don't always buy everything, so be aware of that and know who your buyer is. I'm sure David would love to hear from 23,000 suppliers, but um, it'd be hard for him to get through them all. So, so know where you're selling in the supply chain, who the right buyer is, engineering, tier ones, tier twos, tier threes. We'll talk about that too. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm seeing, oh, I can look right here. <laughs> Innovation, I'm so smart. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. Um, is my, I was just trying to see around the light, more fun. Is my company ready? So look, look inside to your company. When you're going, um, this is a market that's a long, a far distance away. Make sure that you have the internal capacity to uh, supply and service that market. It's a market that will require you to be there and be present. If you try to fly in, fly out of this market, it'll be a real challenge for you to have, have success. You, you, can, you can achieve some success with that, but it really is not a great strategy for market development. So a little bit about Rainmaker. Um, we, uh, we started in 2007. My background is with government as well. I ran the, the British government's office in Alberta for five years and then eventually we, uh, we came together, my, my business partners and myself, Lois Mitchell and Tim Cosmic, who used to be um, an executive for a heavy oil company, sold it, and sold it to Shell in 2006 and together we started Rainmaker to help companies uh, take advantage of the marketplace. Um, and have been working on this ever since. And really, our focus has been highly the oil sands. It's probably 80% of our, of our work. Um, but we do have, have offices. Um, when David said offices here, 
Um, he was actually referring to New York, just so we're clear. We don't, don't have an office in Pittsburgh yet. It's my first visit to Pittsburgh. It's a lovely city and uh, I've enjoyed it so far. So Josh who knows? Josh travels. Josh is in the region. He's based in New York. So, But certainly we are here in the region if it's a big region. So um, anyway, so let's talk a little bit about the challenges because I think this, this highlights where the opportunities may lie. And you may have heard much of this, but I'll just uh, I'll re reiterate some of it. Um, access to markets for the end product. You, we've heard about this. We've heard about pipelines um, and the, the delay on pipelines. Rail is, is filling that gap as quickly as it possibly can. Um, we don't know if, it, if rail can do it all. Rail does offer a lot of advantages to pipe, um, including optionality for the end product, uh, which is interesting. So if you touch on anything to do with rail, um, we've already talked about some of that. There is opportunities within the infrastructure development um, for rail transport in Alberta. But uh, this does open up different opportunities. Of course, the pipelines, well, the, from our position, the pipelines will come with time, and that'll open up new opportunities as well. Uh, shortages of professional talent. Um, this, is, this is a real challenge. At the moment, we're in a slight lull in this area, I would say, but it's, it's ready to pick up again. Uh, so something to be aware of, depending on, again, what your company does or provides. Qualified trades personnel, of course. Any and all uh, are required up there. And um, we, are, we are looking to bring them in, not necessarily move them there. Um, sure, if, they, if that's what they want to do, great. But many, many people fly in and fly out, um, live in their hometown, uh, travel up to, uh, to Fort McMurray and other fine places north, and work uh, for a certain number of days on, weeks on, and then come back to home. Uh, there's, there's a I think Suncor is the third largest airline now in, in Canada, I, I believe. So their, their fleet of jets flying people all over, the, all over the place, I believe they're the third largest airline after Air Canada and WestJet. So it's become quite a large, uh, large endeavor. They have a number of jets and most, most of the companies do. I'm sure um, David could speak to that too. Mostly a lot of them just moving people into the, old, into the Fort McMurray area north. Uh, quite, a, quite a busy little airport there. Um, Mod facilities, uh, this ebbs and flows. So depending on exactly what uh, the, the product is needed at the time and where the, where the different fab shops are, they can be quite busy. Um, and in the last, I think, three years, uh, there's been eight new fab shops uh, set up in Montana. So read the tea leaves. That's what's happening. And uh, material and equipment costs are rising. This is a real challenge for for the owners, uh, for the engineering houses, um, trying to control costs and control the, uh, the cost of the projects and the materials is, is really, really an important piece of the equation for the oil sands. Something for you to consider. It doesn't mean that, you, that they're looking for suppliers to not get a fair, make a fair profit on their, on their product, but they are looking for alternatives and solutions. Um, You'll hear me talk about solutions all the time. Bring solutions to the, to the owners. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for new and innovative ways to, to control their costs and, and produce the product, manufacture the product, really. So, so the industry has evolved. Um, and as it does, so is the supply chain. Uh, really important to note. So from highly engineered and stick build, if you will, in the field, we've, we're moving into modularization. Now, this may seem like a minor thing to folks here in Pittsburgh. I mean, manufacturing is, is old school. Um, but remember that these projects have been built in field for many, many years, and we're just beginning to get to a point where we can actually cookie cut particular elements of it, modularize it, and, uh, and um, build, basically build the projects plug and play, Lego, if you will. Not there yet, though. There's, there are lots of, lots of innovations required there. From insulated to uh, from insulated to collaboration. So what's happening is, um, not many years ago, the industry would very much work in silos, and um, basically develop what they uh, what they considered their own IP on their project products projects. And now they're moving more. Like Kusia is one example of collaboration amongst the industry. So this is a positive step as well. Uh, silos to open innovation. You're starting to it's starting to tackle the challenges together as opposed to by particular companies. From local to international, uh, certainly they're looking internationally now. Um, it used to be everything was done with your buddies and your friends down the street. Um, it's definitely looking outside of that now, which is, which is interesting and opening up huge opportunities. 
from impossible to probable, as as Mr. Isaacs uh, laid out. Some of these some of these um, some of these developments have been challenges in the past, but they're becoming real opportunities of the future. From dirty to green, um, there's a lot of emphasis on the environment, a lot of emphasis in doing this more efficiently, more effectively. Uh, use of water and so on has been a huge part of it. A few little, uh, okay, so where are the opportunities in Western Canada? Um, everywhere. If you, if you look for them, really, there's opportunities all through the, all through the province and through, the, through actually into Saskatchewan as well to the right and to and in BC to the left as well, all, of, all through Western Canada, really. Um, so the trick is to dig them up and find them. Um, then it's to listen, learn from what you're hearing, like really understand what the challenges are there, and don't just bring a presentation. That's my, my one trick to you. Don't, don't roll into Calgary and say, oh, let me show you my cool slide deck of all the stuff we do, and just trust me. You could try it if you like, and when you come back the second time, then maybe you'll try not doing it. Just some past experience. So path to success for you. Um, information. Grab as much information as you possibly can about the market. That's why you're here this morning, which is fantastic. We want to provide as much information as we possibly can for you, as does the consulate. They're a great source of information, and David's office and, and all of us would be very happy to answer questions, I'm sure. Relationships are key in this market, as they are in any market, as they would be for a company coming into Pittsburgh. Uh, relationships truly are key. Um, uh, ownership, owner project leads, engineer leads, etc. Trust, as you can imagine here, trust is everything. So up there, they have to trust that you're, gonna, you're there for them. They've trusted their friends and colleagues for many, many years, and now they're going to trust you. And you're walking into their office trying to build that trust. So remember that that's a very, a very important part. And it can be used positively or negatively. Sometimes trust um, in the market leads them down roads where they make mistakes as well. So, so build the trust. It's very, very critical in this market. And that'll lead to success. Uh, but define the success that you want out of the market is always a key point, okay? So strategic development and who you need to know. Um, market intelligence is critical, but then test the data you get as it applies to your company, tweak your strategy, build a strategic business plan, and then execute it. Be very smart about entering this market. Um, they see, the companies there see a ton of new suppliers all the time. Make sure you're listening, learning, evolving and presenting yourself to the market appropriately. Value chain, supply chain, you got, you've got different uh, levels of, of influence on the market. Respect them and know who they are is really important. The uh, project owners um, are really important to know, but as I said before, don't necessarily think you just want to sell to David. Um, I'm going to try to put up some protection here for David. Uh, find out who he buys from and how you plug into that particular chain. Primary suppliers um, for capital projects and for operations. I had an interesting discussion with Synovus Energy um, a couple months ago. And Synovus just approved their budget for the next 10 years. Um, and they're going to spend $50 billion over the next 10 years. That's one company. And it's not one of the biggest companies. Um, and so what was explained to me, though, which I, I don't know, David might, uh, might have some, some points on this too, but there's a capital expenditure, and this spe specifically this applies to the modularization component and SAG-D. There's a capital spend that goes on. You hear about that all the time. That's what we're going to spend in capital. There's an operations spend on the back end of that. But don't forget a little blip in the middle. That's three times what capital spend is, and it's called sustainable capital, sustaining capital. So this is where you... you Put the first SAG-D project into place in phase one, and you move on to phase two. Back in phase one, they're going to continue to put more and more well pads in and keep developing that particular production in that particular well pad. So there's a huge, huge um, capital component to be aware of that could be very, very interesting to a number of companies who have any experience in mass production of products. Okay? Just to put in the back of your mind. Uh, tiers of suppliers, um, some examples here of sort of the tier one direct, tier two indirect, and tier three uh, supply chain. These are just some examples in the, in the right-hand side, and I'm pretty sure we'll make this deck available if anybody wants to, wants to look at it more closely. Um, things to think about as you're looking at where you fit into the supply chain, and therefore who you'd be selling to, really important. 
Uh, there are key players within the industry that you should be aware of. And remember that uh, even if you have the executive manager project lead on board with your product, the field personnel can make your product fail. It's very important to remember this. If the field personnel doesn't like you for some reason, and um, you roll in there with the whiz-bang perfect technology, and you've got cover from the top, the way this industry works up there, um, from our experience, and Eddie might have different ideas, um, if they want you to fail, they don't like you, or they've got a buddy who's, who you're selling against, they'll make your product fail. So you gotta have the field personnel on board, remember that. Your value proposition. When you think about this, product innovation is key. Um, remember that as you, as you cycle through your product uh, value proposition, um, design, delivery, quality, price, support, service, warranty, and more innovation. Continually be innovating, continually be, be providing solutions to the marketplace. Um, it is a complex uh, product that we're producing up there, and companies are looking for partners and companies who will innovate and help them innovate, so be aware of that. That is a part of your value proposition. If you just want to say, oh, this, this worked really well in Texas, I'm sure it'll work here, uh, probably it, it may not work. We had a company out of, um, well, maybe I won't tell you where they're from. Um, we had a company out of the United States, big place, um, come up with a particular product um, that simply wasn't required in the market. Uh, because of the way we build things, it just, it, it's got, they have a huge market in Texas and southern states for their particular product. And again, I don't think I'm going to mention too much about it um, in this room. Um, but basically, we, we, knocked, we knocked on doors for months and had no traction whatsoever with this product. Great product in the states, but sometimes the product just doesn't fit the market. So be aware of that. Make sure you're not just pushing a product, but looking to push solutions and innovations. That's what sells. Okay, uh, very quickly on to prequal. Very, I'll try to get through this really quick. I know we're at the end of time. I, I see that, David. Um, just some things to remember as you go as you go through prequalification. These are important steps, and there's much more to be put here. But again, we'll make this available to you. Um, seeing as I'm getting the hook, um, information resources. Some more information here. The one of the better private sector project information uh, sites is that oil sands. Na a, a navigator. Um, have a look at that. It'll, it'll list all the products, all the, sorry, projects and where they're at and give you who the players are pretty quickly. So it's a great resource. The other ones there are, are products that Rainmaker has developed. You can certainly have a look at those. Um, and uh, they're on our website, but also the links are here. And I'll end with my top 10 in, uh, in honor of Mr. Letterman um, resigning, um, I suppose. So top 10 secrets to success in this market. Learn about the challenges of the resource. That's what you're here to do today, which is great, but keep learning about it. Um, the challenges seem to change all the time. And um, we were talking about that last night at the reception. Uh, what we were looking at five years ago is not what we're looking at now. So be aware of the challenges and the changes that are happening and, and the challenges of this particular resource. Um, understand the climate. Now that means both the physical climate outside, very cold, um, but also the climate, the business climate there in, in, uh, in Alberta. Be aware of it. Be, uh, know, know who does what and, and why. Very important. Um, respect the expertise in the market. Uh, we do get this from companies coming in from around the world. They think that they know better than Albertans do. Um, just, just and, and, you know, Albertans are funny, funny breed in a sense. If you respect them, they'll respect you. If you don't respect them, you know, they'll book you a ticket out of town. Uh, just kidding. Um, so just, it, it just, uh, we've seen plenty of companies as well, Canadian companies from Ontario come in um, and blow the market for years because just thought they had the solution and weren't really willing to listen to what had happened in the market. So learn to sell to engineers. It's easy, right? Understand the decision-making hierarchy, which I talked about a bit earlier. Build support from influencers. It's not just about your target sales, uh, your target uh, buyer. It's about those, those people and those, those people around you that influence that particular buying uh, piece. Establish a presence, be in the market. Flying in and out every three months uh, is a challenging way to evolve this market. Don't wait. 
Um, every day that you wait, there's 10 companies like you moving into the market. So be aware that it's, it's pretty active. There's a lot of companies going in, but there's a big opportunity. So if you are there early, you'll get, it, you'll get a good look for sure. Bring solutions, not just products. You've heard me talk about that. Last but less, not least, build trust. Deliver what you promise. It's the biggest way to build trust. The biggest way to kill trust is promise something and not deliver. So with that, I'll hand it back over. Thank you.